close, T.S. Eliot makes an appearance in the rabbinic uh, judgment. So T.S. Eliot stands before a heavenly court, the prosecutor. T.S., I got to tell you the MS. Nice to you here, pot a cigar. Remember me, palms turned out, Chicago semi Viennese. Like I'm some kind of ape? You didn't like my baggy pants. Now I'm here to take your measure. The prosecutor is dragged, but I got a sign. You think God don't have a sense of humor? It's punishment for you, but also me. I have to read Fakak the Lines, you wrote about the Jews. <laughs> Exhibit A. The Jew squats on the windowsill of the owner, spawned in some estaminet in Antwerp. Squats, what's the matter? Did you owe your landlord rent? And spawn like shrimp in a tank? Or in some dank cabaret after hours, two Jew toads hopping on a table? And what about the lowercase j? You must have hated us to break the rules of grammar, most bank clerkly of Englishmen. <laughs> Still, I gotta admire your style, the classy way you built those lines. The sounds kick back and forth. Jew and spawn, owner and Antwerp squats. You got a delicate ear. <laughs> The W sounds kiss word to word before they stick in the crawl. But the lowercase Jew that spawned them all, that I don't forgive. You were a poet, T.S., you should have known better, a guardian of the tongue. That lowercase J was a country club sign. No dogs or Jews allowed. To keep us out of the poem, or make us stoop to empty. Exhibit B. Rachel May Rabinovich tears at the grapes with murderous paws. Me, I'm an ape, okay? Look what you did to poor Rachel, a raccoon you made her. That gorgeous girl with the dark eyes, dead now 50 years. I remember you locked the watcher and the one in the Spanish cave. You beaked in through the bath, barroom door in your <coughs> bank clerk suit, buttoned up tight clutching your umbrella handle. Premature, dirty old man, did you dream Rabinovich, a rabbi's daughter, would softly claw your grapes? <laughs> if only you weren't so scared. If only you had known her, what a world of wonder she did. You were drawn by what was under, and you were afraid to. Under sea, under skirts, the secret under name for the secret underneath, where you thought you might drown. I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuffling across the floors of silent seas. Pardon the dime store Freud from a Chicago Viennese, but about yourself you didn't feel so good, so you took it out on me and Rachel and Sir Ferdinand Klein. <laughs> Was he the only phony, you fake English from St. Louis, Missouri? Were you ashamed that you like to sniff around dirty bars, back alleys, looking for rolled up condoms on the ground? <laughs> Testimony of summer nights. <laughs> hey, everybody's got a hobby. <laughs> Sweet and dirty, high and low, Shakespeare and Dante in your ear, slime in your eye, a stink in your nose. You like to mix it up. London and Jerusalem, you called them unreal cities. Maybe what made those cities unreal was you never saw the people in them. Just toads, <coughs> raccoons, apes, and rats. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank, rat's feet over broken glass. And here's exhibit C on the Rialto ones. The rats are underneath the piles. The Jew is underneath the lot. That time in Venice, a Jew got between you and a painting. What did he see when you looked in his face? A lusterless, protrusive eye stares from the protozoic slime at a perspective of Canaletto. Protrusive eye, protozoic slime, Canaletto. You should plant your head like a potato and grow your eyes underground. Instead of rats, you could have had Rachmanas, 
You could have felt for people like what you felt for rats. I rest my case. Defense. Sir Ferdinand Klein for the defense. What Weinstein's done is most unfair. Excerpts, scraps, bits and pieces, not the whole art, not the song. Let's admit there's much that's ugly in the fragments he's presented. The world is also quite imperfect. Do we then condemn creators? These are only words in a poem, and poetry makes nothing happen. A few bad moments for a Jew in English class. Black people and women have to take far worse. If we must comb the crumbs of hate from every line of verse, there would be little left to read. Without aversion, there is no passion. Without abomination, no law. Surely that's clear to a Jew. Judge to Eliot. I wonder, do you think that's so? Does music have no power? When Hitler wrote crude poems on the walls of the heart, like you, he made a metaphor. Jews were pests, and Zyklon be a pesticide. To bad men, bad poetry gives marching orders. Elliot. Uh, but, but what, as, as Weistein said, rock, rock, uh, Christian mercy, he meant. Surely you can't blame me for what the Nazis did. I wrote those lines before the war. It was a different time. My copyright expires soon. Punishment <laughs> enough. I'll be in public domain. <laughs> Judge, all the worse. You never once apologized, retracted, or removed those lines. You publish them up to the end. Elliot, but I won a Nobel Prize, surely. Judge, there are plenty of them in hell. <clears throat> Come, stand before the golden scale, holding your book, Gerontian, Sweeney among the nightingales, and Blystein with cigar. Here in the light, one particle of hate weighs more than a lifetime of verse. Your defense is your indictment, your judgment, your readership. You will be read most fervently by those who cannot read themselves. Phony, snobs, deluded social climbers, pseudo-English fake professors in bow ties and tweed, anachronisms, wine snobs, false souls who preach but cannot feel the pain of others, hypocrite readers, your sisters, your brothers. Now in the name, Blystein. Excuse me, Your Honor, we Jews have a sign when we want to speak, we interrupt. <laughs> What's your objection? Condemned to his readers? That's too soft by half. What punishment is that? <laughs> they'll love him to death. They'll excuse him in public and in private. They'll laugh. What more do you suggest? If it please the court, purgatory. That's fine, but it's Catholic for Catholics and Jewish for Jews. He's neither. <laughs> Send it from here to High and Plutzik's grandson's bar <laughs> For the Jews, it will seem an afternoon. For him, a hundred years. <laughs> He'll hurrah with Rachel Nair Bimrich and Kazatsky with Allen Ginsberg, who will give him wet, sloppy kisses. It's okay, he's a little sure. While well, his landlord from that Antwerp nightclub leads the Klezmer Orchestra. <laughs> Put him at table 16 with Myron Cohen. They'll torture him with jokes. A million setups in English, a million punchlines in Yiddish. <laughs> then when he's hungry for his delicate palate, matzo ball soup with schmaltz on top, gallon after gallon, and a thousand miles of dishes, shaking glaucous jelly, each with a shtickle gefilte fish, <laughs> stamped with a capital J. <laughs> Elliot. I am bound upon a bagel of fire. <laughs> Silence. As the accused seems unrepentant, we'll take Blystein's suggestion to heart, turning to Elliot. And now in the name of the letter J, which everyone can see, J that stands for Jehovah, Jesus, but also for Jew, that little J you left behind now stands for justice too. Blystein. Poets, you should be careful the words you choose. Remember, there are no lowercase Jews. 